Hello? Are, are we Hi. Hey, everybody. We're doing the thing. <laughs> yeah, this is our episode five of our fabulous duo short stories. Uh, we decided that for this week, just because it's episode five, five is a nice number, we will do our first live, like live stream of our stories and just, you know, get some uh, community engagement going on. It was a mad dash trying to get this up and running. <laughs> yeah. It was. <laughs> but we do have some two really fun stories for you guys this week. So we hope that you enjoy. And um, if you are using the Podbean app, feel free to chat with us real time while we're going through this. And, um, you know, any comments or anything like that. Yeah, if you have the app, please chat in because um, it'll be cool. <laughs> I know a lot of people are listening online. So <laughs> we're not going to get a lot of chat. <laughs> <laughs> but not to worry. Um, you know, we're all going to have a fun time here. Okay. All right, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and get started with Michelle's story. Uh, this was based off of the prompt that I had given her last week, in which... I thought a... I was going first this time. No, I'm going first. What? How no, can I'm you I'm going go first? Because <laughs> episode five, in episode one, I went first, then every odd number I would go first. And then every even number, you would go first. Um, Do you want to go first? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Because mine is... You know what? It's fine. We'll, we'll do this. Oh! <gasps> Hello! Oh, excellent. Uh, You're able to hear us now. So glad. Cool. We, we figured out how to um, got in, get in here recently. So, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, we all figured out how to get into this app. Woo! Oh, welcome, Jennifer, Hello. to our uh, live stream. Yay! Okay, so should we wait a bit? No, I think, I think we're okay. There's... Things mostly everyone. I mean, it's, I mean, oh, you people, have the app too. Hey. Hello, how's it going? And just <laughs> in case anyone is wondering, if at any point you are like leaving on this, uh, this live is going to be recorded, oh so you can always come back later and uh, finish up wherever we left off. You know, or at least we <laughs> hope you will. Why are you driving and texting? What the fuck? Maybe it's, uh, you know, speech to text. Ah, uh, yes. One of those. Technology yeah. is amazing. Technology. So I'm going to go first. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, <laughs> let me go first. Oh, shit. Um, I mean, yeah. So because this is um, live, <laughs> I can't censor anything. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, because it's live, you cannot censor anything. But uh, that's, this is the best part. Live, we're gonna get some genuine we're reactions and some uh, some of Michelle's real side. Okay. Get... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm probably ready. Hold on, I just want to see if I can invite one more one more person. Yeah, yeah. Invite away. The more, the merrier. Making sure that everyone can get in. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we're good to get started. 
Hold on, I'm trying to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're not responding. Go. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. 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 So last week I had provided Michelle with a prompt of a female mafia boss is married to a like lead detective um and on the streets they're always at war but once they get home they kind of just act like nothing ever happened and just live their lives and you know so this is michelle's story war war never changes at least that's what they say It was a phrase that she uttered often, even though she didn't quite understand it. She was familiar with war. She understood war perfectly well. She even considered herself good at it. But what she couldn't understand was how anyone could think that war was always the same. In fact, she thought it was always changing. There were all kinds of different and new techniques to use to get ahead of the opponent. Every time she outsmarted someone was a product of her own making. With every perfectly executed operation, every expansion in her territory, she felt capable. She felt strong. She felt dominant. The city belonged to her. No one could stand in her way. And if anyone tried to, she took absolute pleasure in persuading them to step aside. Reveling in her power all the way to the day she was awarded the top spot in her organization until one day the most annoying thorn in her side gained a victory on her. The city's law enforcement was not fooling around when it came to her. The bounty on her head was enough to buy a house, and to her, that was not only a compliment, but an investment. She could always cash herself in and break out later if she ever needed some extra income, but then she never did. Her associates wouldn't dare leave her in jail for too long. She wouldn't even need to lift a finger. The cops had been trying to catch her for so long that her and the lead investigator knew each other far too well, with him even coming up with a nickname for her that she was sure he pulled out of his ass. Madam Mafia Boss. It was the stupidest thing she'd ever heard, but she knew that the name was purposefully infuriating just to get under her skin. (laughs) And it worked, too. She started making decisions based on anger rather than strategy, and that caused the one slip-up that continued to stick to her, till death do they part. Out of complete spite for the lead detective, she decided to turn herself in to make good on that juicy bounty. The plan was perfect. Infiltrate the jail, spend a month recruiting new people in her group, then escape with all of them in one go. They would have been able to get the money, expand their group, and most importantly, make a complete fool out of the entire legal system, especially that smug detective. The detective caught wind of her plan early, so early in fact, she was sure that he knew right from the moment she was caught. She had to give him credit. If he didn't have to abide by all those laws, He'd be a worthy adversary. Her plan had been thwarted by him, but her associates hadn't given up and were causing havoc in the streets, really giving the people a show, making sure that everyone understood who the city really belonged to. In the end, he had to offer her a deal. One day, he walked into her cell and handed her a document and a pen. I will let you out to appease your mafia buddies. You can keep the bounty money, but you can't take any of your new recruits with you. Also, he gestured to the document, this is the quickest and easiest way for me to hinder your movement. 
once you sign that contract, we'll be living together as a husband and wife. That day was the first time she had ever tried to squeeze the life out of somebody with her bare hands. If the guards hadn't come in, she finally would have been able to get rid of that thorn. Every day she spent in that cell past the date of the jailbreak hurt her ego. Every morning when she woke up to the prison walls and food just reminded her that she had suffered the most humiliating loss of her career, brought about by her own hubris. Finally, she decided that anything was better than staying in that cell. She read the document over and over, looking for and memorizing any loopholes that she could take advantage of. Then called for the detective. He had asked her if she wanted a ceremony, and that day was the second time she had ever tried to choke someone to death with her bare hands. The contract she signed was strict. They had all her assets frozen, even her emergency ones she didn't have, even have access to, anything. And if she had ever broken the contract, they would seize everything she owned. Unfortunately for her, the money from the bounty was also included in her personal assets. Another foolishly brazen thing she did because she got too cocky. Killing the detective would break the contract, causing all the wealth that she had amassed for years to disappear. If she immobilized him in any way, met with her group meeting without reporting to him first, or did so much as steal a pack of gum, she could say goodbye to her money. She often wondered how anyone could blindly follow the orders of their superiors to the point that they would get married just for the job. Then again, it's not like she'd ever done that. From then on, she did as the contract stated. She lived with him under the pretext of husband and wife, which also just happened to give him access to her frozen money if it were to ever come unfrozen. And she controlled the rioting groups, but things weren't the same. There was a stain on her legacy now, one of her own making. She didn't feel as powerful as she used to. So she began pushing the boundaries of the contract without ever actually breaking it. Even in a city as dilapidated and crime infested as this one, she was determined to regain her footing as the undisputed ruler of it. But to do this, she needed another source of capital. Their day to day consisted of her meeting with her associates as normal and planning and conducting damage control operations for the time that she was in jail. While he tailed her, and had her wear a wire. Her associates were all so happy to have her back. It's a good thing they were so simple-minded, or they would have known riots are usually dealt with by force. And if not for making some kind of deal with the devil, she never would have been let out. Apparently, the wiretap wasn't humiliating enough. He'd also pick her outfit for her the night before and lay it out on her bed so as to make sure that the wiretap was never found. It was in her best interest also that they never saw it. If any random member did, they'd put a put it, blah, wow. They do that to their own boss? Okay. Um, <laughs> they would have put it. <laughs> yeah, no, I just got caught off guard because she's the boss. Yeah, it was I in mean, her best interest. Oh, sorry. No. It, it was in her best interest also that they never saw it. If any random member did, they'd put a bullet in her head in a second. I don't know. Nevertheless, her loyalties lay with her associates, and she continued to be the spearhead that triumphed over other groups and gangs, all while making sure that her master plan was tightly under wraps. 
she was instructed to always keep herself in his line of sight. This meant staying in front of windows and never straying from a clear path. At night when she got home, he would already be there eating takeout. They never talked and never brought up work, acting as if nothing happened. Even with him keeping such a close eye on her, she found that there were things that even he couldn't control. On top of the wire, he had her wear a body cam disguised as an ugly floral brooch and use a special pen for all of her daily duties. The pen recorded pen strokes so that he knew exactly what she was writing if the camera was ever obscured. If he saw her write with anything other than that pen, he'd consider that a breach of contract. She always made sure that she was on the move, making it hard for the investigator to fully bug any one place. At night, while they were both home, she learned sign language while pretending to be asleep. Lastly, she had been training the members to look down in her presence so that she could start communicating with the ones she trusted in sign language, keeping her hands out of sight of her brooch. Her master plan relied heavily on the timing of the next big heist. This heist would technically breach the contract. Up until now, everything he'd been witnessing was mostly politics between gang members, with nothing illegal happening yet. She was preparing to finally grasp true freedom and lose all her frozen assets to the government, but replace them with new ones. In a few days time, there would be an opportunity to intercept a dirty deal with the city's mayor. She didn't know if he had any idea about the mayor's schemes, but she knew that chances are this operation wouldn't get her in any trouble from the investigator considering that his boss was the culprit. And by the end of the operation, he might even have to destroy all the data from the wiretap and the body cam himself. D-Day was fast approaching, and she could tell that he'd already picked up on the fact she was planning on something. They were to overtake the mayor, his goons and the seller with nothing but brute force taking the merchandise for themselves and reselling them to another buyer. The mayor would be powerless if he chose to do anything about it. He would expose himself to the public and maybe even be kicked out of office. Or he could complete his dirty deal and she would expose the mayor herself with body cam footage and wiretap recordings. The deal was happening late at night and the investigator would notice her breaking curfew, which breaks contract, and then definitely come to look for her, which is exactly what she wanted. She wanted him to see the government he worked for was the same as the mafias he fights against. The time finally came and they were all crouched in hiding places around the rendezvous point. Recon team making sure that there weren't any security traps or anything, and also laid some of their own traps in case something went wrong. A loud beeping sound filled the night air, and a giant truck started backing out into an abandoned parking lot. From the other end, a small convoy of black bulletproof cars entered as well. As the mayor stepped out of the vehicle, she could feel smiles start to spread on her face. Even she had her doubts about the intel she received about the mayor's secret tradings, but all of that was washed away with a sound of expensive shoes clacking on asphalt as he walked over to the cellar driving the truck. He didn't hold out his hand for a handshake like he'd always do on TV. And he didn't have any semblance of professionalism coming from him. This was definitely something he didn't want anyone to see. She made sure that her body cam had a clear shot of the scene before her. While her and the rest of the spearhead team were keeping an eye on the deal, the others went around back, surrounding them and blocking off their escape route. 
they would send her a signal if they found anything suspicious. It looked like the mayor had already concluded his business and was about to leave when the inspector's car pulled up near the mayor's car. He sped into the parking lot so fast that she was sure he had figured out that this would be her big break, her way of getting out of his clutches for good. Unfortunately for him, that is the last thing you want to do in a DEA like this. Yeah, that's a typo. Yeah. It's supposed to say deal. I did. Exactly. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, it is. I'm fixing it right now. <laughs> I'm looking at it and like, can you believe her? Can you believe her? I'm How like, what does the DEA me... have to do with this? <laughs> How could she send me incorrect things? Look at that. Whatever. Unfortunately for him, that is the last thing you want to do in a deal like this. At the sound of him approaching the rendezvous point, she gave her team the signal, and they were on the mare and the cellar in no time, knocking them to the ground. They had to make sure that no team member was left behind, so as the leader, her and two other members, held off the mare's bodyguards with cover fire while the rest of them piled into and on top of the truck. Everyone had safely made it on the truck, and it started to back out. All that was left was for her to jump on the side and ride it out of the parking lot. But once again, she couldn't help herself. Before jumping on the truck, she turned to the investigator to give him one last smirk. But before she could turn back to jump on the truck, she saw him return a smirk with rage in his eyes. This filled her with more satisfaction than any heist ever could. The sweet, sweet taste of revenge made her absolutely giddy until she saw something in his hand. Before she could even surrender, before she could even scream at him not to, he pulled the pin of a grenade and threw it at the truck. She knew the destructive power of a grenade and she knew that he didn't know anything about them. He had no idea what he had just done. Instinctively, she threw her hands over her head and jumped as far away from the truck as possible, landing flat on her stomach. When the grenade hit the truck, it exploded, causing the truck engine to burst into flames. She had no idea the crazy bastard would chase her down to this extent. She started screaming at her team to get out of the truck before they were blown up with it, and she herself took the time she had and ran to take cover in her hiding spot from earlier. A ball of flame engulfed the entire truck and a blast of sound shook the parking lot. As soon as she could, she leapt onto her feet and ran to the back of the truck to check if everyone made it out okay. As she ran, she could hear the investigator running after her. The closer she got to the truck, the more she heard crying. But it wasn't the sound of gang hardened criminals crying. It was the sound of women and children. Her feet slowed as she slowly started to lose uh, feelings in, le in her legs. Oh my god, what's happening? Um, oh no. Her feet slowed as she started to lose the feeling in legs at the thoughts <laughs> running through her mind. <laughs> Oh, no. that's written all oh wrong. God. Her feet slowed as she started to lose the feeling in her legs at the thoughts running through her mind. Yeah, okay, but like, oh my god, what's happening here? Um, Don't worry, stroke out later, please. Thank you. <laughs> for a city full of wanted criminals and mercenaries, there weren't any real rules except one. No human trafficking. It came as no surprise to her that the people who dared to break that unspoken clause were the people who thought that they were the law. She was standing at the back door of the truck that had been blown open and watching in abstract horror as malnourished people limped their way out of the burning truck. The investigator was standing next to her, mirroring her expression. They looked at each other for a brief second, 
then dropped their weapons and ran towards the ball of flame to get the people out before another explosion could be set off. In the end, it seemed like they had been on the same side the whole time. What have you done? <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this <laughs> is my, what I was looking forward to in a, in a live stream. Um, what do people think? <laughs> oh, uh, first, Kristen, what do you think? <laughs> what have you done? What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> what so, have I done? This was supposed to be, well, in my mind, the story was uh -huh. going to be like, oh, you know, Mrs. Mafia Boss is in love with Mr. Detective, and Mr. Detective is in love with Mr. Uh, Mrs. Mafia Boss, and like, but then you know. Into they just ignore each other outside like hey i know you were shooting at my gang thankfully your bullets missed i made sure to miss all of your people too let's go back home and have dinner <laughs> and that's what i was you know and then here you are having malnourished human trafficking people blown up by a grenade <laughs> uh, no i oh. like it Good. i like it but i was hoping what have you that done did it make sense? It made sense. It made perfect That's sense. That is exactly <laughs> what the system is anyways, you know? This is exactly what it is. Everyone's corrupt. And this is like, it turns out the people that are supposed to be upholding the laws, the people who are the most corrupt and, you know, um, that's, you know, you're not supposed to reflect real life. <laughs> Ah, but this is this is me. This is I am this. Ah, this yes, yes. Stuff. You do yeah, reflect real life as you are real life. Ah, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, no, I oh. um, I really want to know what people think. Was anybody confused about any part? Does anyone have any questions? Pick apart the shit out of the story. Um, and <laughs> let me also just, if I may, defend myself. <laughs> I was um. <laughs> Firstly, I, I don't like writing, like, obviously happy shit. Like, like, it's just... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, so, you're right. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so that was um, the thing. And, like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, I, I specifically don't like writing fluffy things too often unless I can like put like an interesting spin on it. And that's why I really like uh, dark twists and stuff like this, because not only does it give you that, whoa, I didn't expect that kind of feeling, but also with this particular one, I wanted to, to be honest, I, <laughs> I funneled a lot of my feelings about like the war in Russia into this. Um, Hello. Hey, Brian. So, yes. So we just finished my story and we're just talking about it now. Um, yeah. So I, I didn't know if I wanted them to actually fall in love or if I wanted them to just end up in a partnership. And there wasn't enough time and it was going to be too long to hash out like a love story and mm -hmm. also put in human trafficking. So therefore... <laughs> I had to just uh, come to a compromise where I just made them team up at the end. So, like, the idea then for them afterwards is to kind of, like, work together against a corrupt government like the mayor who is actively, um, like, committing human trafficking crimes and stuff like that. So I, I was hoping I could try to, like, hash out the mayor's crimes some more. But I'm like, how long is this going to be? Because what is that, four four pages? Yeah, you did about four pages in a little bit. But you know what? Every sentence was well worth reading. So it, it all Good. came together really well. Um, it went in a direction that I feel is true to your nature, you know? Um, obviously, you know, a a anyone who's been listening to our podcast can tell that I like to write fluffy, cute, silly stories. Um you know, while Michelle likes to take real issues. Um, and this this is like, this is real. This is good. Yeah. So the idea, like, okay, now, like, 
I was like, <laughs> I started writing it and I'm like, hmm, do I want the main character to be like a direct metaphor to Vladimir Putin? <laughs> Wow. She didn't... <laughs> yeah. Welcome, D. I hope you enjoy walking in here to the sound of us talking about Vladimir Putin. Um, That's a good one. I like that one. A ghost story where you're the main character? Does that mean that you're the ghost? Or does that mean that you're the person fighting the ghost? Ah, come on. Um, A ghost story where... Oh. Oh, oh, will you listen? <laughs> will you, you listen to the whole. <laughs> why, why is um why is everyone reacting this way? <laughs> um, you listen to the whole thing. What did you think? <laughs> uh, I had I actually had a lot of fun writing it. Oh, I'm so glad you loved oh. it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I am. I do identify that as that now. Those are my pronouns, messy and witch. Witch. Excellent. <laughs> oh, okay, Roberta. So you like Brian's idea. So, I mean, that gives us some... Um, maybe that could be geared towards them that we do next week. I have, I have to it, scream I'm... now? <laughs> it wasn't enough to be, like, talking like a cat. I have to scream now, too. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you loved it. Yeah, it was, it was my favorite part. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right me out. I think I, uh, I think I threw up my mouth. No, no. <laughs> That's what they're for, right? Um, <laughs> <Your mouth. laughs> I don't know what kind of eating disorders you have. Uh, the kind where I see food and I continue eating it. But it's not disorder. Let's... No, that's, that's life. That's happiness. Hey! That's happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so, um, oh, Scooby Doo was betrayed. I think. Okay. That oh, well, I mean, that is fun. I love, I love Scooby Doo betrayal because that is a real game. Where Scooby Doo gets murdered by a demon. Yes, that's the next story. No, it's real. It's a real game. It's a real game. <laughs> no. What, no, Scooby Doo? It's, it's a real, it's a yeah, it's a real game. I know. Scooby Doo no, and uh, like what? betrayal, like yeah. Oh, I know betrayal's a wait. Yeah. Oh, Scooby Doo betrayal there is a you game. Go. You're getting what? it. What? She's getting it, everyone. Why did they make that? <laughs> it's kind of lame. It's actually um, it's pretty fun. It's pretty good. The only downside is that the rule books are all misprints, so. They're all yeah. misprint. Oh. It's all a big misprint. The rules are all a mess. But um, yeah. Betrayal is awesome. I love that. I yes, love that that's game like so my much. favorite game. I love that game. And yes, I will kill Scooby Doo. <laughs> I was actually nice. I was actually contemplating killing off both of these characters in the story and having it be like, oh, you know. We were so focused on realizing our ambitions that we died. <laughs> like like that. I mean, yeah, that's real. That's real. That happens. That yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> okay. So hold on. I just want to <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uploaded all the tiles. Oh, that's cool. That's useful. Oh. Um, let's make a real note for real. I like the write a ghost story where you're the main character because my mind immediately goes to where like I am the ghost as the main character. Yeah, I like right, that. right. But yeah, you're actually making it a list. I was, I was using my brain. <laughs> oh, I forgot so, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, okay, so I do want to give everyone a quick disclaimer before we move on to the next story. Uh, so my story, um, just keep in mind that I am very, very far from being a vegan. Go ahead, Michelle. Oh, no. Right. This is happening. Okay. Um, let's, let's, let us commence. <laughs> if vegans count, if you eat vegans in this, then yes, it does contain meat. <laughs> okay, anyway. Let's go. <clears throat> um, 
The prompt was a vegan farmer that accidentally creates living a living, breathing, moving vegetable is conflicted over whether this is still in line with veganism. Now, <clears throat> how many pages is this? Plenty. Okay. Strap in. It's going to get weird. <clears throat> The rooster's crow echoed echoed through the farm, letting everyone know it was time to rise and get their day started. James sprung from his bed, ready for another day of harvesting veggies to make the world one step closer to a happier, healthier, vegan-friendly world. Although James did have a few animals on the farm, they were ones that he had saved from slaughterhouses. Or in the case of the rooster, that's his best friend, Gerald. (laughs) That's not hilarious. Now, today was especially exciting for him, as he had been working on a new growth formula for his soil to see if he can get the plants to absorb more of the nutrients and become bigger and juicier, but still natural. He got the idea from one of his great-grandmother's cookbooks, as it had all kinds of mixtures with random ingredients, like a dash of black salt with the essence of magnolia flowers, alongside some crushed verbena? Verbena? Verbena brewed. What? What is it? Verbena. Verbena. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Alongside some crushed verbena brewed in a low heat, constantly stirring in the night of the full moon. What the hell kind of witch shit? His grandmother was a witch. (laughs) Great grandmother. Um, His great grandmother was a witch. Okay. Looking through that book, he found one that sounded cool and might help his plants grow. But getting all of the ingredients was hard work, especially since delivery out to his farm is quite the hassle for the drivers. But today, his final ingredient package would arrive. Scarfing down his breakfast, then running out towards his mailbox, he was getting much he was getting more and more anxious. This is going to be amazing. Even if it doesn't help too much, the place might smell nicer with the amount of flowers and herbs used for the recipes. He prepared his ingredients and dropped them in his pot one by one. I'm going to guess this is a cauldron. (laughs) Um, All right. I have newt. Sounded gross, so I just bought mustard seeds. Okay. (laughs) Um, Some... (laughs) Okay. Some tooth of wolf. Well, I don't believe in harming animals, so I got some wolfsbane. Some garlic. A bit of this, a pinch of that, and now for the final ingredient. I'll need to carefully cut this piece and, ah, as James cut the, (laughs) but Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient. (laughs) As James cut the last ingredient, um, his, uh, the, this, oh, his knife slipped and sliced his finger, causing his blood to drip into the pot. Due to the pain and panic to clean up the blood, he hadn't realized that any had dripped in. After cleaning and dressing the cut, he returned back to the pot to find that it was bubbling and boiling. It works, I think. It's reacting, at least. You know what? Let me test it out before I celebrate anything here. Hmm. James, the Nobel Prize winner. Do they give out Nobel Prizes for farming? No. Um, He continued to talk to himself to keep his mind off of the throbbing pain in his finger from the cut. He poured the mixture into a spray bottle, making sure not to spill any as this could change his farm forever. And he did not want to waste even a single drop. As he, as he, what? As he does need to ensure he can sustain, oh, as he does need to ensure that he can ex- sustain his farm, he uses his greenhouse for testing everything before bringing it out into the fields. One by one, he spritzed the plants and vegetables, leaving them with a wonderful dewy glow. After he had finished applying his new concoction to the plants, he left the greenhouse and continued his regular day of work on the farm. Hopefully I see some results within the next week or two. He tried to contain his excitement, but no one was around, so he just skipped happily around through his fields, tending to the land. That night, before heading to bed, James, being super excited and anxious, went to say goodnight to the plants in the greenhouse. When he got there, the plants still had that dewy glow, but he could have sworn they looked even a a bit plumper and juicier. It must just be the light reflecting off of them and the shadows mixing together. He headed back inside and went to bed, ready to start a new day. The rooster crowed again, again, uh, alerting James. 
Once again, he went through his morning routine and scarfed down his breakfast, then ran to the greenhouse. To his surprise, all of the vegetables had grown almost twice their size, and they looked as if they were having extra parts being grown directly from them. It really works! I did it! This is going to be amazing! Once they are fully ripe, I can't wait to harvest them! He gave them all another... He gave them all another spritz and went about his day. At the end of a hard day's work, he went back to bed and prepared for tomorrow's exciting reveal. Once more, the rooster crowed. James skipped breakfast and ran straight to the greenhouse. Good morning, my babies. He burst open, shouting to his crops. But to his surprise, all of the vegetables... God. All of the vegetables were staring at him. What? What? He was shocked, looking at the tomatoes with arms and legs, dancing happily while staring. <laughs> he, um, he was, they, okay, he, <laughs> with arms and legs, dancing happily while staring at him. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so clearly I was so excited that I'm dreaming about my crops. Yep, that's what this is. He was trying to make sense of this. As he was standing there in shock, a little radish had walked over and hugged his leg. That's not... <laughs> uh, okay. Wait. All right. I know I called you babies, but I'm... He kept looking at them and found them all oddly adorable. He created these somehow, and they are all just so innocent and sweet. Wait a second, there is no way I could possibly eat you guys, or sell you. I mean, technically, you are still vegetables. No, 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 you're alive. Well, everything is kind of alive. No, 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 this would be an... Wait, you aren't animals, so this isn't cruelty. He spent the next hour wondering if he could even cook these, or just raise them. By some miracle, you are alive, so I cannot in good conscience eat you. He's so f conflicted, and I'm here for it. I feel this. <laughs> he finally made a decision. He will take care of them, just like the rest of the animals on the farm. He was still hoping that this was all some very vivid dream, and that he would wake up any minute now. But unfortunately, as time passed, he had to accept this was his, rea this was his reality now. He wrapped up his farming for the day, brought in troughs of water for the vegetables to drink from, as well as some soil in case they get hungry. The vegetables eat soil? <laughs> Do you know what vegetables eat? Have you seen vegetables? They eat other vegetables! <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, we're left off at where they eat soil. Uh, where, oh god, I totally lost where I am. Uh, I wrapped up in the... Okay. He wasn't sure what to feed them, so he just went with what made sense. <laughs> Another day was complete, and this time he wasn't as excited for the next day. The sun came through James' window, and he woke up stretching and yawning, still a bit mentally fatigued after the previous day's events. He headed down the stairs and had some breakfast. Once breakfast was wrapped up, he strolled over to his front door and was ready to check on the, veg on the veggies. When he realized... Oh no... Did I hear Gerald this morning? As he was walking to the greenhouse, he noticed, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Um, as he was walking to the greenhouse, he noticed a line of feathers on the way to the door. Upon opening the door, he was greeted with an unfortunate, horrifying sight. The vegetables were all, oh my fucking God. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay. The vegetables were all there, ravenously ripping apart Gerald and feasting on him. G Gerald? <laughs> James said heartbreakingly. I don't think that was heartbreak. I was I was laughing. Okay. In a rage, he decided enough was enough and that this is going too far. He grabbed an axe and went to town on the vegetables. Chopping and slicing continued until everything was, into per was in perfect cuts. Well, it would be a shame to let these vegetables go to waste, he thought to himself while bringing them inside. He boiled the veggies, sautéed them, made a whole arrangement of different meals, and began to try them. As he took his first bite, 
His eyes widened, and he had the most heartwarming feeling. This flavor, this what? He couldn't believe how amazing the food tasted. He then began to taste some of the other veggies, and some of them were bland and just tasted like normal. Wait a second, the tomatoes were out of this world. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Um. <clears throat> The tomatoes were out of this world, and they were the ones who feasted the most on Gerald. Poor Gerald, may he rest in pieces. But the eggplant didn't. Oh, but the but the eggplant didn't seem like it had a chance to bite him yet. Now, ja now James is very against animal cruelty and veganism. Oh, sorry, <laughs> animal cruelty and vegan. He just doesn't eat. <laughs> now, James is very against animal cruelty, and veganism, veganism helped him stay healthy and happy all this time. But he had an idea. A week later, his sister visited the farm and noticed that James' skin was glowing. He was so much happier and had more energy than ever before. Wow, what is your secret? She asked in amazement. James smirked and said with glee, just a new way I've been preparing my veggies lately. It's done wonders. After seeing off his sister, he headed over to the barn and was taking one of the sheep out for a nighttime walk. He trailed over to the greenhouse, opened the door, and let it inside, then closed it. Ah, I can't wait for breakfast. The animals eat the grass and plants. The plants eat the animals. And now I eat the plants. The end. Yeah. Hell. <laughs> the hell was that? Well, the hell. <laughs> Hold it's on. Definitely not human trafficking, malnourished people. It kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> but they were so plump and juicy. Definitely not malnourished. Oh my god! They killed his chicken. Yes, Gerald did have to go, unfortunately, but. In the name of veganism. My favorite part out. was my favorite part was when he killed all the vegetables with an axe. How come they didn't eat him? They should have eaten him. That would have been amazing. <laughs> they should I have mean, just turned on him. I don't know how many times you've seen a baby attack their parents. Ah, oh, wait, no, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you forgot Gerald was a chicken? Oh, yes, yeah, Gerald no, is not a relative in a sense. It kind of is, but, you know, it's a different kind of relative. Uh, um, I Yes. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I did not expect the chicken to get murdered by the vegetables. <laughs> oh, but I heard it in your voice the second you realized that, see, I was trying to set it up in a way that every every single morning you guys were reminded that the rooster crowed. Until one yeah. morning, that was no longer evident. So I was hoping that everyone in their mind was like, huh, another morning, I don't see any mention of Gerald. And then there was mention of Gerald. <laughs> and then there was, and it was not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> that is Vegan Farms. Wow, that was hilarious. I That was... That was hilarious and horrible, and at the same time, <laughs> I was literally like, oh no, the fucking chicken is dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that he just so... immediately murdered, like, I, I know I've said it already, but I really like when he murdered the vegetables, and I especially like that he remembered which ones ate his friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, usually... <laughs> When something eats your friend, you remember. You remember. I, I guess, yeah, yeah. He should have made like tomato paste out of them. <laughs> well, you know, he did. He made an arrangement. So some of the tomatoes yes, he made, he made a nice well, gazpacho. Some of, them, uh, some yeah, of, some of the them eggplant. It was like baba ganoush. You know, <laughs> it, it's all sorts of different things. And you know, um, he's a farmer, and as a, a farmer, he does know how to handle like you know, food and stuff in a way. And I find the farmers can cook pretty well. I, You do? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess they would have to. They would. I just, they would. I, 
Look, see, oh, one of farmer? our viewers is a farmer and does. Amazing. I knew it. Source checked out. Perfect. Well, there you go. Now you know what not to do when you're trying to grow vegetables. Don't put your blood in your grandma's witch recipe. Otherwise, that's going to happen. You can kind of tell that James is not really too certain that his grandmother, his great grandmother, is a witch because, it's, you know. His great mother. He's like, he's like, he's like, oh, let me put in an eye of newt in this. Oh, big round pot that my grandmother left me. This big black cast iron pot. <laughs> Let me also put on my 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 recipe making hat that's pointed at the top for some reason. <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> I do hope that all of you thoroughly enjoyed that story and Michelle's story, of course. You know? It it was it was so fun. And I, I was really excited like uh doing a live this is our first live so you know we're super yeah, excited fun. and this is really good this is nice i like this i i like i i love all my viewers everybody and michelle loves them too i'm telling her i'm telling you guys that she does even though she doesn't act like she loves anything at all um, <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> you know this is this is good this is good and i appreciate all of you guys for jumping in and taking a listen yeah should should this be like a friday thing or wait, this is going to <laughs> we are to always on Fridays. <laughs> should, this be, should this be like a monthly thing? I, I, I like mean, this. This is fun. This is fun. You know, I like getting to interact with our viewers. I like getting to interact with people and just seeing, you know, the chat is popping off. Everyone is going to town here and they're having a great time. So I'm loving seeing the engagement. Um, and it does look like, you know, the viewers do want us to continue doing lives. I think it'll be fun. I really like seeing the reactions to the stories right away instead of yeah. waiting for you to send me texts. <laughs> so, you know, maybe the first Friday of every month we do a live just to kick off the month. Is that what this is? That's, that's not, that's, I like that. I like that idea. That's, that's what this is. Yeah. Oh. And I, I don't, I'm not keeping track of days. All I know is I have so many things to do, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, good. And then like, for the rest of the month, we'll just be like regularly updating or like uploading regular yeah. episodes with our music and our sound effects because I literally made that sensor noise for every time we swear. And I love every time she it. swears. <laughs> every time I swear. I, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be easier instead of having to edit and stuff like that. This cuts out like 10 hours of editing for me. <laughs> so much editing is cut out but so much engagement is brought in and it's so great because like it's definitely worth a trade-off because like who's gonna edit for 10 hours <laughs> yeah and you know i like that you guys got to hear our live reactions because it's like oh oh boy what do you mean that this gang leader is gonna get shot in the head by her team of people if they notice like where's your loyalty yeah, I have to stop myself but... from screaming sometimes when 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 something funny happens. <laughs> like when I was reading the Cupid story and I was dying, I was like dying. I I thought edit out so much of my laughing. Oh my god! And then like on the live, yeah, I have to make it sure was I a don't lot of die laughing. <laughs> right? You know, it is stop myself. so good that we're like just you know, I I I really I like hearing Michelle laugh at things that I write. And this is yeah. just my writing style. I tend to be very, you know. I'm just glad you didn't make kinda, me say something know, silly. stupid again. What? I, just... I mean, what sound does a tomato make? Just to be like, oh, papa, squish, squish. Like, what, what do you oh. want? Oh, papa, squish, squish. <laughs> what sound does a tomato make, son? Squish, squish. <laughs> <laughs> That's not stupid. That's clever. Yeah. But as we are coming up here on the hour, uh, let's um, let's uh, give each other our prompts. Oh sh! What? Hold on. Oh Hold no! On. Wait. <laughs> I completely forgot about that part again. Uh oh. What was it again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, like you know. Wait, hold on, I wrote it. I wrote it. Hold on, I wrote it down. Let me go get it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Good thing I wrote it down this time. Okay. Actually, 
instead, why don't we do what like does one of us want to do Brian's idea? I with mean, the ghost? I I can run with that. You want to do it? Yeah, yeah. I'll run with that. Shh. Yeah, okay. So then that's your prompt. <laughs> Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. You want to give me some more details than just that's your prompt? <laughs> <I'm tired. laughs> oh yeah. Now I remember. That was the okay. 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 So we have options. <laughs> so. The uh, the original prompt I had was uh, it doesn't have to be like you, it can be like first person or whatever. But there's a ghost hunter who falls in love with the ghost that they're hunting, or it could be <laughs> Brian's one. What say you? It's all ghosts. They're both it's ghosts. All ghosts. It's all ghosts. I mean. If it's the main, hold on, because okay, the main character, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Right. Interesting. Well, I mean, okay, like, yeah. Unless you had one that you wanted me to do. Well, I mean, uh, the one that I was gonna originally have you do, um is basically a story about a god that is kind of just getting really bored of doing what they do and wants to just let loose and go wild. So they're looking for a replacement so they can go party in the human world and not have to worry about their godly duties. I like that. <laughs> I like that too. Okay, how about we hold off the god one? Okay. I feel like I want more time to write that. Okay. And then we should both do like the ghost ones for next week. Yeah. Should we do like a rock, paper, scissors to find out who should who should do which? Are we gonna like fight to the death for it? Because <laughs> I kinda wanna do it too. <laughs> like you you kinda wanna fight to the death? Okay, yeah, no, we can no. fight to the death. Like, okay, well like <laughs> I, I mean, kind of want to do the prop. Oh my god. So what I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So we'll just yeah, we'll do we'll do oh wait. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, also yeah. Let me let oh, me also. I was just thinking quick. about like perspectives. Yes, yes, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh shit. Uh, yes. They, they, oh, oh. I don't know if to turn it off. Just let it, let it play its course. Let nature take its course. Let the vegetables eat the animals. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Good to know you can't cancel that in the middle of the sound. Good to know. Thanks, Claudine. Of course not. No, no, no. So what if, because like, okay, Brian's idea was a ghost story where you're the main character, right? Mm-hmm. So what if we kind of combine that with yours about a ghost hunter falls in love with the ghost and we both take a perspective. So one of us will do the ghost hunter. One of us will do the ghost. Yes. Oh, oh, so it'll be like a, like a, like a, like a, from, oh, that's interesting. Like the perspective of each of them. Exactly. So well, like the ghost, the ghost. That's really cool. I like that. Because we know the fight to the death would end in you dying, you could be the ghost and I'll be the ghost. Oh, that... Listen, you have so many medical issues. All I have to do is run upstairs and you would die. <laughs> yes. But yes. <laughs> yes, I would. Your went. apartment has an elevator. <laughs> it also has stairs. <laughs> oh, you'll see. <laughs> I see stairs. <laughs> so, I like. That. What about you guys? Like what do you What do you guys think? Do you guys think that's a good idea? How do you guys like that? I see some people saying, "Yeah, that's good." 
better we'll love story than it, Twilight? We'll call it Twilight. We'll call it Please Don't Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Gaslight. We'll call it Gaslight. <laughs> God. And the whole time the person wasn't the ghost, someone was just making them think they were the ghosts. <laughs> I'm just a baker who fell in my flower. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. Well, hold on. But who's the ghost? Who's the hunter? I'm the ghost. You know what? No. You know what? Let's save that for next week as a surprise for the viewers. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Yeah. No. So you guys aren't going to know. We're going to continue this conversation as soon as we end this. Um, yes. I'm thinking we, so you think we, yeah, we'll tell the same story from different perspectives? Yes. I think so. Right? Because it depends. Okay. We would have to work together for this one. We would have to work together, which means that, Okay. You know what? I know exactly how this can work without us still being surprised at the outcome. Because I don't know about oh, you guys, not... but I love being surprised when I read Michelle's stories. And I know Michelle loves the surprise of seeing a chicken being eaten by vegetables. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out the logistics because like this, I like this, but we, I think we have to figure it out. This, 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 is, yeah. a, this is a little bit complicated than what we're used to. Yeah, this is amazing though. Thank you so much for that um, for that idea. Um, we're gonna take it. We're gonna run with it. You're not getting any royalties. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't um, think we are either. <laughs> no, we we don't get paid for this. Uh, but you know, we're here every Friday, and we are so glad that you all stuck around and listened with us. And you know. Yes, thanks for dropping in. So I think we're gonna end it here because I we have to we have to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna fight to the death now, and one of us will be a ghost by next week. So bye everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>